everybody. This is our Pinot Noir Sensing. And we have a good friend Marge here from the neighborhood. How are you? I'm doing great. This is a great way to spend part of a day. Thank you, Marilyn, for inviting you, me. You like Pinot Noirs? I do. I do. I like wines in general, but I love reds. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we are going to have some fun here. Um, okay, at the end of the last Sensing, we asked everybody if they wanted to, to go ahead and read up on the Pinot Noir, and they might want to get a bottle from each of the three regions. And um, we're gonna flip it and start with France, but we said Oregon has some really nice ones. Uh, Erath, Firestein, very reasonable prices. Uh, France, Jardin Bouchard. Now these are bottom of the line because so much of France is high-end Burgundies. And then New Zealand, Kim Crawford, Oyster Bay, Jules Taylor. But if you haven't had a chance to get your friends together and go buy a bottle from each of the three regions, you may want to just stop this now, go do that, and then pick it up later so they can enjoy this wine sensing with you. But we're going to go ahead. Uh, and just a reminder that the overall strategy of this course is that we're trying to really learn one grape at a time. And the way to learn that grape is to go through one grape from three different regions. So that's why today we're going to do that with the Pinot Noir. To help us evaluate the wine, we're going to be using the University of California 20 point Davis system. And why we call it sensing is it involves much more than your taste buds. It involves your eyesight when you look at the wine in the glass, the nose of the wine, the taste of it, the feel in your mouth. And then we're going to get better and better at describing each dimension that our senses detect in standard wine terminology. So when you walk out of here, you're going to know this grape. You're probably going to be able to identify it by region or at least warm climate to cold climate. And you can develop your skills in assessing and describing wine attributes. But most of all, I want you to just relax and have fun and really enjoy the wine. I was reading a little bit about Pinot Noir grape, and it said it's one of the oldest grapes. It is over a thousand years older than a Cabernet Sauvignon grape. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know that. I don't know. You know, you can't believe everything you read, but huh. I read that in two different sites that I was studying. I didn't know about the age of that. Um, overall, in red wine sensing, the colors are going to go from pink to deep tawny brick rose if they right pass through a dark deep red. So whenever you're tasting red wine, they're probably gonna be in that spectrum. The nose on a red wine can be fruity, floral, spicy, and then it can be really earthy and oaky because these are the wines that people generally age in oak. And they add a lot of those mm -hmm. other characteristics that we go, oh, I thought it's the grape. No, 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 it's the winemaker that did that. Um, and when you're evaluating them, you're trying to see is a little too much or too little of any one of those components. The nose on a red wine can go anywhere, clean, fresh, dirty, yeasty, sulfur, and the mouth can be dry. The other thing you'll pick up in red wines that we would not in whites is you may get tannin in the mouth, a real dryness in them. Uh, the Pinot Noir type, what kind of red wine is that? When you categorize red wines, it's usually by some degree of the body. So if it's really fresh, fruity, low tannin, and somewhat thin, like a Beaujolais, that's like in the first category. Pinot Noir seem to all fall in the middle category, medium to full bodied, as opposed to the big, powerful, spicy, I'll say northern French Rhones, California mm -hmm. Zins. Right. Some of those, like, like Australian Syrahs. You know. uh, this is probably the pickiest grape you'll read about. It's very picky about climate, soil, yes. uh -huh. handling in the vineyard and cellar. It's very temperamental. It's supposed to be one of the toughest ones to grow, and it, and it really only likes certain climate. I think it's got to have cold mm -hmm. nights to ripen. I guess it. that's why Oregon. One it's, of the reasons why Oregon and yeah. New Zealand, that way. And let's hear it for Borgogna. Yes. Uh, Burgundy. Light to medium body, colored red with relatively no tannin acidity. It goes well with game and most meat and best 
it's one of the best reds for fish because it's not mm. so big in body or in taste to overpower it. So we're going to start, I flipped around, but it's everybody thinks we started with uh, Oregon. We decided it would make more sense to start with France. So I hope I didn't throw anybody for a loop. But at any rate, um, well, we're going to first I'll go through some of the characteristics then I'll show you the bottle. Then we'll jump into it. Um, characteristics in Burgundy. Oh, this, this is an area that I know. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the Burgundy region. Um, bright ruby color, but the very, very different Northern Burgundy from Southern. Northern Burgundy is very earthy. Uh, we used to think terroir really just meant soil, but no, it's just very, very earthy taste, full-bodied mushroom. My favorite village to hang out in is Gevray Chambertin. You can just go tasting anywhere down the main strip of Gevray Chambertin. I'm also a big fan of Maurice Saint-Denis. And the other thing, there are 24 Grand Crus in the northern area wow. of Burgundy, but all of Burgundy is only like 17 miles. But you can rent a bike and just ride all over there. I think one of the best wines in the world is in Northern Burgundy. It's a Chambertin and, and the restaurant's great. They make one of the key food pairing dishes that I love with it is coco vin and escargot. The mm -hmm. coco vin is just red with uh, chicken with red wine, but it also has mushrooms and baby pearl onions and it's thick and it's... Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I will stop sharing uh, this slide and I'll bring up the bottle. This is a Jadot. Jadot is one of the three or four biggest negotiants of Burgundy in France. Mm -hmm. And this is a 2016. Um, this one does say Pinot Noir on the bottle. I usually say the French don't do that because they believe terroir is more important. The microclimate it comes from is more important than the grape. But because they're interested in the American palate and wallet. <laughs> they, have, <laughs> they have a tendency now to put the grape on it, so we all know what this is. Okay, so and one of the things I want everybody to be aware of is, while you may not be able to read everything we're writing here with a black marker, at the end of this entire sensing, we're gonna throw this over on an Excel spreadsheet and you'll see it and you'll be able to uh, take a picture of it if you want. But realize too that your results are gonna be very different than ours. You may not have the same wines we have. You may have different years. You probably have different palates. And I'm guessing you've got different opinions with you and your friends there. So um, we will be writing, we'll be talking about it, but if you can't see it, don't worry about it. We're gonna get it to you in an Excel sheet at the end of it. But we always like to start with, how does this look against the white tablecloth. What is how what color would you say this is? It's you know, the, not deep deep red, but it's really kind of a garment. Got some oh yeah, ruby. Mm -hmm. Ruby. Ruby's good. Yes, right. I like ruby. Does it have little tinges of brown on it? It does. I was noticing a little bit when I tasted them earlier and make sure they were okay. So we're getting ruby. The tinges brown. The other thing I like to do when it's still in the glass is mm -hmm. what, what does it tell you about the body? What are you seeing about that body right now? Is it, how does it move in the glass? Is it a really big wine? Is it well, leaving any it legs? It is leaving legs. So it says a little bit of alcohol. It yeah. may be doing that. So weird. I can see it. And you know, when you swirl, Look at how it's, it forms a certain pattern in the glass. But you think it's kind of like a medium body? Yeah, the way it's I looking? Do. yeah. Because I always try to, from the first two areas of sensing, I try to guess what it's going to taste like. It makes it more fun. Ah. So we think this might be a medium body medium, when it gets in right. our mouth. Mm -hmm. Right. So what do you think of uh, the bouquet? Or the I don't think strawberry. Like strawberry. I'm not sure about that. Not roses, not violets for sure. But it's cherries, berry, all that berry stuff, but not. What about black cherry? Mm hmm. Right. Mm. Okay. Now, what do you think it's going to taste like? 
What do you think it's going to be like in the mouth? Do you think it's going to drop off right away? Do you think it's going to be big in the mouth? I don't think it's going to be big. I think it's going to be like, just like the, the bouquet. It's going to just come gently elegant into your mouth. Yes. It's going to be a little like tart. A, yeah, I'm just going to say a little <laughs> tart. That's that cherry or that black cassis or current that they're talking about there. But, but it's gentle through the mouth. It's not, it's tart, but it's not like like a Sauvignon Blanc or something like that. It's not did, citrusy. Did it drop off kind of fast? It didn't like go all over your tongue and last for a while. Mm. I don't even feel it in the back of my mouth though. So it's pretty short. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. Okay. It's dry. Mm -hmm. Now tell me about also about the glass, Marilyn. Is this a Pinot yes. in wine glass yes. specifically? You've got a uh, Riedel mm -hmm. uh, Pinot Noir red burgundy glass. Same thing. A red burgundy in France is 100% Pinot Noir. So this glass was made specifically for the Pinot Noir grape where it places it on your tongue. I'm starting to go a little more black cherry on the nose. And a little spice. Ooh. A little spice to it. Um, Ooh. Like peppery, but not hot pepper. Subtle spice. Mm -hmm. That could be from oak. Mm -hmm. Are you getting any berry? Is it, is, it, is it the strawberry still subtle? Mm, the no, not as much. I think more like the cherry. You know, the, and black, black, like a really deep cherry. Black um, cherry? Black cherry. But not a, and even though spice, not a, like I say, not a hot, not that hot pepper spice, but a, just a, a little, like a tickle. Tickle your tongue. Are you getting any tannin? <laughs> <laughs> What's what hmm, I don't know because I'm not remembering. I'm trying to think. Tannin. All right, remind me again. Tannin. It oh. comes from the grape okay. skin and the twigs if they are uh, fermented with it. Mm. A little, but not really heavy. It's it. This wine is generally very light in terms of tannin. Mm -hmm. it's a little, 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 but do you think it's oaky? I don't know about oaky. No, no, I didn't. Okay. Pinot Noirs are, are just not done that way. They're too elegant. Um, do you think it's balanced between the bouquet and between the nose mm -hmm. and the mouth? I do because when I first got the bouquet and then tasted and then went back to the bouquet, it wasn't like something so different. It was that same Gentle, but smooth. Good, yes. Yeah, a little tart. You. Little. I was a little surprised mm -hmm. that it was a light in body and light in finish. I expected that sil a silkiness to last a little bit longer. Uh, I know. Okay. Yeah. No. no. You're right. What do you think about? What would you pair this with? Well, I have lately been, and just this afternoon, I was in my backyard woods and I found some mushrooms oh. to harvest. And I just, I saw that one of the things it says is with yeah. mushrooms. So I'm going to go home <laughs> and cook, maybe cook a big mushroom that looks like a portobello. It's a lactiflonius, or I can't remember exactly the name of it, but one of our other neighbors introduced me to mushrooms. Ah. And so I'm, I would say I would cook this, uh, not this, I would cook a mushroom, <laughs> mushroom, portobello mushroom, and well, enjoy that. That's, that's a really good thing in, in cocoa that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go to the next slide that will be introducing the next wine. Which is from Oregon. And Oregon has more of a maritime climate uh, because it's got no severe seasons, not right. severe winters, not really, really long, hot summers. And this wine, again, likes, I think, cool nights. You're going to find this wine, it should be a little bit more fruit forward, 
with satiny, uh, subtle texture, crisp but balanced, um, French oak. Now, this is what mm -hmm. I've noticed in American Pinot Noirs. I seem to usually pick up more cinnamon. Oh, okay. I'll be on those. No idea if this one will. Yeah, right. But uh, particularly from uh, some of the California ones. Um, clove and vanilla, less oak gets body from the grape skin, the tannin, so mm -hmm. it could be a little more bitter, or it could be more cranberries and earth. Okay. Some of them are rustic, dark fruit, dark color, uh, cola, coffee, chocolate, mm -hmm. some fresh fruit, cherry, raspberry, plums, and the food pairing, they think, pomegranate glazed duck. Well, I think I'd like pomegranate glazed duck with about anything. <laughs> uh, herb roasted pork tenderloin, oven baked salmon, mushrooms with herbs. Oh, it is a wrath from uh, Oregon. One of the key regions in Oregon that I think you're familiar with is Willamette. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a t-shirt from there. You have a t-shirt? I do. It tells you how to pronounce it. It tells you how to pronounce it, right. <laughs> Arath's been around for a long time. So when I lived up in Seattle, I'd wander down to Oregon. And I remember Arath being there some time ago. Um, but at any rate, this is a Oregon, and of course, since it's from the United States, it tells you the grape, always will, and the year, it'll tell you the percent alcohol and the appellation. So what does this color look like, particularly compared to the last one? Or against a white tablecloth first. It seems even lighter. Yes, I think so. It seems almost... Uh, more, it's more red, pink. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting a rose, deep rose tinges yes, uh -huh. mm -hmm. on this. A very, very fine print in the back of the bottle. Okay, then what are you getting in the nose? Sweeter than the last one. Maybe some of that strawberry, more strawberry or Jamie, could be plum. Yeah, I'm getting maybe getting a little plum, subtle plum. Mm -hmm. Cause everything, everything so far has been very subtle. Is it true? Um, I read again. I've been doing some research before I came, but that the nose, where you put your nose in the glass, you may get a different. Okay, if you put it at the bottom and then or the top, or I think so. I think um, it's important to swirl in my book. People think I'm crazy, but I'm always swirling my lines, not mm -hmm. putting my hand on the bowl and getting my nose done it because I want to know what it's going to tell me, what's in that bouquet. But also, if I'm in a restaurant and they fill up the glass, it drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I ask for another empty glass, pour half of it in it. So I can sniff and swirl, and this becomes the pitcher. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Because I, if, you know, when you get them, they're all full. I know. Yeah, that's right. Well, you want it full. Yeah, you want it. You want your money's worth, but well, you don't have room to. So you remember, but this is Oregon, right? And do you remember that movie Sideways? Oh, yeah. From, which was all about the Pinot. Find the Pinot. Find the grape and how it was like if you, if you liked anything else, you were a you crazy, were crazy. <laughs> yes, yeah, they were very opinionated. So, what do you think it's going to taste like in the mouth? It's going to be really uh, light. I think it's going to be, to me, it has a plum. So, it's going to be a tart stop, start, and a sweet finish. Do you think it's going to be short? Just go boom. Or like I don't know. I haven't got that. Um, I don't know. I don't have that knowledge yet. I don't think we're getting much lingering. We certainly did in the first one. It just seems like a it was here then it was gone. Hmm. I, I got more pronounced berry on the edges of my tongue. How about you? Mm -hmm. Sweeter though. Mm -hmm. It's that strawberry maybe. Strawberry plum. I still have that plum feeling. We have a sweeter berry. Is it as tart as the last one? And I don't think so. I don't think so either. No. Like I say, just that, um, and I don't know about the finish. I can't, 
Maybe because it's a short finish. I don't know. It is. I think they're. I think both of these were pretty short. But I, I'm starting to get a little something in the farewell, which is the end of the. Mm -hmm. I like to try that one. Definitely tartar. Mm -hmm. This is sweeter fruit. Agree with you, hundred um, percent. But this is that sounds so funny to say because aren't they all made with grapes? <laughs> 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 A sweeter fruit. That's <laughs> sweeter fruit. <laughs> um, and it's still dry. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it still seems like a similar finish to the last one. Yes, in terms of length. Any spice on the end of this one? Because the last one we've got a little spice. Which could mean less, but it yeah. still has a nice little, a little something. But I don't know if that's a cinnamon. I want to I want to taste the cinnamon <laughs> that you mentioned it, but I, I don't know if it's a cinnamon or something. No, I think it's a good thing. Mm hmm Because like sometimes uh, from America, they have a little too much cinnamon and it's so pronounced, it just overshadows everything else. Let me see if there's anything else. Uh, oh, tannins. Yeah, are you getting any? I don't think so. No. Not like if you're having a Cabernet or something like that. Cabernet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're having a, or a Syrah, oh my gosh, you've got those yummies. But this is just very, I can see it's a very um, palatable wine to have with almost any kind of meal even though they do suggest certain things, but. And you have some cheese here? Yes, there's some agria, and it cuts itself with this little hoozy dicky. Okay. You just okay. slide the cheese under. Is that all right, or do I need to? You, you can just put it under, and then it'll go. Yeah. Compel. Oh, and there you go. Okay. Uh, but I'm just trying to find a milder mm -hmm. cheese with a nice texture for this. And I happen to be a fan. Yes, Brie. Oh, no. I'm going to make a quiche. Well, it's morning you all, too. Brie. Now and then there'll be pets wandering through, particularly since the cheese is out. <laughs> so <laughs> be prepared. Cats and dogs. <laughs> Cats and dogs <laughs> over here. Um, okay, and so overall, do you think it's balanced? It's just, it's, it's, everything seems very, very subtle. Mm hmm. Right? Nothing like jumps at you, like there's not too much of this, too much of the dry, too much of. Mm -hmm. Subtle. And then deep rose. Yep. That is just. All right. So now we're gonna, and we may go back over them at the end because I mm -hmm. found sometimes when they open up a little more, they'll change. Or you want to go back and say, I didn't quite, I want to compare it to the mm -hmm. third one. But we're going to uh, go. Uh, so anyway, it's got soil in New Zealand like France. Um, it's supposed to have darker fruit aromas with a savory component. Whoa. Rich, full, sweet fruit on entry with dark plum and a chocolate spectrum. That sounds like a candy bar. Mm. <laughs> Red and dark berry fruit with spicy notes. So this, you know, this sounds like this is going to have some kind of different flavors than the ones we've had. Uh, food pairing, seared tuna, raclette, mm, spaghetti, yeah. roast duck. I can go green with those. That's kind of an unusual list of food. I know. We for, think of spaghetti and with that list of for Pinot Noir. Yeah. Far out. So we're going to um, show you the bottle. And if you all attended one of the earlier uh, sensing with us, you've seen Kim Crawford before from New Zealand. Uh, Kim has been around. At least 2008 or so, I'm pretty sure. And this is a 2018, and it says it's New World, so it'll say the grape on the label. Pinot Noir. And again, this is the most southern wine region in the world. But it's not, it doesn't seem to be as deep a red um, as the burn orange. First one. Yeah. The burn orange tinges red. Oh, yeah, blood orange. <laughs> blood burn oranges. Orange. It's like burn orange. Mm -hmm. How does it go with that cheese? 
good. It goes very well. I just had a little bite of the cheese, and now I've had a little sip of the wine. Ooh, mm, still some cheese. And absolutely. Well, it's your cheese, so yes. You can have it. And I was thinking about something. You know, when I make my quiche, I use a gruyere, and I wonder if this would be a good wine to have with quiche. Mm. Not that you'd be drinking at breakfast, but if you had a wine for, mm. if you had a quiche for lunch, you could. Or, well, I'd be like quiche for lunch and dinner. Mm -hmm. So we've got more of a, a burnt orange look on the tinges of it. It's mm -hmm. Water almost is just moving very easily. Now, what do you think about the aroma and bouquet? Mm -hmm. I'm getting some spice. I'm getting a little cinnamon. Absolutely. Yes. Right there. Spice. Cinnamon, cinnamon. And something else there. What else? What else? That's what I'm trying to think. Is something it? at the end of the. Oh, it's okay. okay. A farewell and nose. You know, it must be just all cinnamon all the way. I just want to think of a nutmeg. Okay, what do you think it's going to be like in the mouth? It's going to be bigger. I think it's going to be tart. It's going to be tart. I think this one might be bigger in the mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why. I just. And maybe the finish, because it's smooth, will last longer. Right. There's a little something different at the end. Mm -hmm. And then the upper palate. Maybe a little wood. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe that's the cinnamon bark. What are cinnamon sticks. sticks. Cinnamon sticks. So it's... <laughs> Longer finish. Mm-hmm. It's a little dry, but not, do you think a little dry? Yeah, so. But when it moved in the glass, I thought it was going to be a little bigger in the mouth than it turned out to oh, be. Maybe you just need to take a bigger sip. I'll we'll take a bigger sip. Oh, they'll make it bigger, they'll make it bigger right. in the mouth. I know it doesn't work that way, but <laughs> all right, everybody. Marge is also a professional judge because we had a Bordeaux tasting here where everybody made their own Bordeaux. She was the final judge. I was one person's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta figure it out. That was right. Now, I, I, I asked you about the glass and also the temperature. Because you know, like you like a white wine cold or red mm -hmm. wine. So, what is the like a good temperature for this? Well, the cellar should probably be about 55. When the French said room temperature, they meant chateaus in France. Okay. With a fireplace way at the other end mm -hmm. of the building. So, um, but the critical thing if you're aging your own is just that it's consistent temperature. Red wines don't like a fluctuation mm -hmm. or they can go bad. Right. But 55, 55 in the cell, then you bring it up and say, gee, I don't want my glasses frosted. Right. You know, I don't want the bottle frosted. I want it to open up a little bit. And you may have to decide if you're going to decant it. And that's when I decided on the first one today. I just thought it, it felt closed. But Pinot Noir, you don't want to decant too much because it's such a delicate wine. Mm -hmm. You don't want to ruin it. Yeah, you would lose some, lose something if you yes. decanted it forever. over, over diffusing the mm. tastes that are in there. Um, let's see. We said it's dry. The yes. body we said was a little bigger than the other two. Right, or? and not sweet, but um, maybe it's the spice. The, maybe it is that kind of cinnamon in the background that gives it a little different. The other two are. Certainly not tart, but yeah, there's, there's a little more oak. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We have to see. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Oak on that one. Yeah, the body's a little bigger. Do you like a bigger body on this one? Um, is it more pleasing? Or not pleasing? Know. This, it is fine. I and mean, they were all delicious, but, you know, I don't know if I have a preference for one or the other. You're not getting any tannin? No. No tannin. No tannin. 
Um, is it well balanced in the nose and the mouth? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very well balanced. So now the, the tough part is we're going to have to go back through and put some plus and minuses okay. on these guys. And what I've been trying to do along the way is to do that. Uh, on the first one, we were saying that the nose was maybe a little too subtle. It was kind of dark right. and a very short finish. Mm -hmm. But then we were kind of finding that short finish was kind of common. And the question is, what do, you, what do you think between two and three? Which one do you like better? Oregon or New Zealand? Well, I think I'm beginning to like number three. I think so. Um, remind everybody that right at the end here, we're going to bring the Excel spreadsheet up. If you really want to see some of our comments that aren't in my squiggly horrible printing, we'll bring it up, typed up, and you can take a picture of that if you would like to. Um, but our next one, we're pretty excited about, is going to be Chardonnay. We're going to have France, California, and Australia. And here are some different prices you may find. If you're looking there, that first one from France is from the Macon region, uh, south of southern area of Burgundy. California, a lot of great prices there. Jaylor, River Road, Rodney Strong, very reasonable. And Australia, Jacobs Creek. So anyway, hang on a minute and we'll be back with uh, the results of our tasting in that spreadsheet. Thanks, Marilyn. Oh, Enjoy thank you it. so much. I really appreciate you doing this with us. That was a lot of fun. Well, I certainly hope everybody enjoyed that tasting with March. I certainly did. But these wines were difficult. They're very subtle. I'm just going to go over it briefly as you all just sat through our sensing with us. Uh, the one from France, we found that it was kind of hard to get the nose on it. Uh, it was subtle. Well, the other issues we had, the tartness in the mouth wasn't all that pleasing, and it had a kind of a disappointing short finish. Very light tannins. Overall, we thought it was a little too tart and light. The uh, one from Oregon, um, we thought had a really nice nose on it, subtle plum, and then the mouth a sweeter berry that was pleasing. But again, kind of a short finish, but 2017. But it was well balanced between, I think, the mouth and the nose. And then we get into the New Zealand one, and we started finding it more and more attractive. We found the nose with the spice and cinnamon, and the mouth with the longer finish and bigger body was kind of what we were looking for. So we rated that a little higher because of those attributes. You'll see the pluses and minuses that I put on that, as that is pretty much how we wrapped it up. Anyway, we certainly hope to see you all in uh, the next tasting that's going to be Chardonnay. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.